Okay. No. I'd like to call the um, the commissioner-led discussion Ramsey County Board Modernization Project meeting to order. I'm really excited to um, be here. Now, the introductory comments are by Tony Carter, so <laughs> maybe we'll not do that. But I guess I would like to, uh, well, first of all, we should go around and introduce everybody. Here. So, Nicole. Commissioner Nicole Fredham, District 1. Mary Jo McGuire, Commissioner District 2. Brian O'Connor, County Manager. Karen Francois, Deputy County Manager, Information and Public Records. Rich Christensen, Chief of Information Officer. Mr. Mattis Castillo, District 3. Victoria Reinhardt, Commissioner of District 7. Rafael Ortega, District 5. Darren Tobolt, uh, Commissioner of Reinhardt's office. Melissa Jamrock, Commissioner of McGuire's office. Sheila Denny, Commissioner of Housing's office. George Hargrove, uh, Controller for the Economic kind of Growth and Investment Service Team. Jan Duffy, County Manager's office. Okay. I would like to, um, Karen was wonderful enough to give me um, some comments and really the framework for the Commissioner for this commissioner led discussion. Um, because I know, I don't know about you, but I had questions about like, okay, modernization, what does that mean? I'm getting new computers, you know? <laughs> I mean, now, I knew it wasn't that. But, um, but I still, I, I wanted to get a little bit of a framework for how this is going to roll out. Um, and so she, she provided me this. I don't know, have others gotten this as well? As they're, as they're attached to the packets that okay. you have now that are over here with oh. the agenda. Okay. Does um, everybody have one? Mm -hmm. No. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so. No, I have it. Oh, okay. Madam Chair, the first half of the information was a part of the strategic planning day originally. Okay. The part of the modernization construct part of the discussion today was the was the follow-up that the chair asked us to prepare for today's discussion session. So, um, you know, as far as what we are hoping to get out of this, obviously, is the review of the charter, administrative code, board actions related to the county board, um, especially related to the organizational realignment that we have been going through, not only um, this year with the, the restructuring of the committees, but also with all of the reorganization that's taken place into the service teams. Um, hoping to... Um, are, they will be interviewing commissioners to gain perspective and insight about the role of the county board. Um, and I'm not sure if role of the county board is the correct way to put it because they, we are the ones that are um, responsible for what happens in the county, for the county. But I think it's more about how does it align with the service teams. So I think we know our role as the county board, um, but how it fits with how do we move things through? How do we get what we think is needed for the residents first uh, to come forward? So um, I think the, the wording of that one probably could be a little bit different, but regardless, the idea is that we are working with commissioners and commissioner's offices so that we can make sure we work um, efficiently and well together. Um, evaluating the staff functions within the county board office and make sure they're aligned with the work of the commissioners. Some of that has already taken place with the uh, lead uh, um, administrative staff. Um, and that person, the person in that role right now is Debbie Orr, um, but really trying to make sure that we can advance the work of the organization. And how do we do that in a structured way and having people that are held, re held accountable? Um, identify and address issues that may arise as a result of the modernization work because whenever there's change of any kind, um, there's always something that there's a hiccup that you go, huh, never thought about that one. Um, and then making recommendations as necessary. So there will be um, really kind of updating but also making, uh, I believe, well, there will be changes that will happen as a result of what we are doing as a county and how the county board um, not only reviews, but sets the, the table for how all of this works together, um, especially through our chair. Um, so there are a number of, um, to do this in order to, we need to answer the following questions, and there are a number of them, and I think we've already uh, kind of gone through those as far as what we expect to come out of the modernization uh, program. And then um, I believe that you will be going through the modernization construct as well. 
So I think kind of just getting an idea of what this is about, what it means to our um, to our whole organization. Um, we have been doing a great job in making sure that we get things in line for the residents first vision. Um, and now we need to really look more inward as far as how can we make sure that we are, um, well, that we're fulfilling our duties as elected officials and making sure that um, we're in line with what we're asking others to do as well. That's probably a simple way to put it, but <laughs> that's what we need to do. Commissioner Carter, um, did you want to make some introductory comments because I kind of punted here. <laughs> you know what, I think you've done an excellent job. Okay. And I just really appreciate it. Um, late to the meeting because there was someone there to talk about our, our, uh, Carol Levin. our <laughs> process this mm -hmm. morning on Amy. So I'm fine to just follow and fill in as we go along in this discussion. I don't know if I missed an introduction that Karen has already made, or if you were going through that. We did do the introductions. But not, or did you but not, 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 <laughs> not an <laughs> overview <laughs> as such. A no, you know what? I just skipped right over that side of the, those three people there. So why don't we do that, and then you can move right in. So Ryan, why don't you introduce yourself first? Uh, Madam Chair, uh, Ryan O'Connor, County Manager. Oh. And, um, Karen Francois, Deputy <laughs> County Manager, um, Information and Public Records. And actually, you just made my job very easy because <laughs> those were actually my introductory <laughs> remarks. Oh, oh, I thought you did it to me. No, I just, I, I wanted you to know exactly what was going to happen here today. But thank you. I appreciate that very much. All right. Um, because now what we're going to do and, and what... Um, uh, Rich didn't say is that he is also the acting um, director of our uh, enterprise project management office okay. and uh, through the project management office is where we get the staff resources and support to do our modernization efforts so if you don't mind at this point um, Rich is going to talk with us about the modernization construct um, to give you a, a little bit better idea of what happens in a modernization process. Should we introduce the rest of the people in the room? I think we, we already went around. Oh, did we? I thought, okay, I, when we miss some people, I... So my my fault that I was late. So I you don't know someone in the room would be happy to introduce ourselves. Yeah. Just two ger germinating ways this came forward today as we go to Rich and go forward, commissioners. Um, one is as we've onboarded two new commissioners within the past 16 or 18 months. I don't remember the deadline, the date exactly for that. One of the questions that's come up a few times is like. Where is some of this written down that is being done through the modernization process? And part of the answer is it's, it's not really in an easy spot right now. And so it's come to the forefront, and actually, through the onboarding of two new commissioners, th this has kind of come up in different ways at different points along the way. Second part was this is originally was part of the strategic planning day, was where it was going to be talked about. But because we went longer on some other parts, it got punted to a discussion That's session right. today instead. I just wanted to ground you on how it came to be today. Yeah, and, and then just. Um, the, the board modernization initiative um, is going to be done to um, help us to ensure that there is board and organizational alignment, organizational structure alignment, and also, like the county manager said, we want this process and the outcomes of board modernization um, to be documented so that it takes us well into the future um, and make sure that there is continued um, board and organizational structure alignment. So Madam Chair, Madam Chair, Commissioners, I've been involved with a lot of modernization efforts over time, and you know, we've built out a structure that's fairly simple and and straightforward in, in a way to go about it that really provides a holistic approach to looking at you know, where we're at, where we want to be. And then what does it take, uh, you know, to make that transition, right? So that's the idea of a, of a modernization effort in general. And it's, it's a flexible model. Sometimes it's more about process or documentation or culture or systems or technology, right? Modernization itself says whatever of those things, whatever that blend is that gets us to the outcome we need is what we'll do, right? So it doesn't presuppose it's going to be more about one thing or another that gets learned in the process, okay? So that's... That's the, the macro picture. 
Um, so it starts out defining the characteristics of modern, and we'll do that as part of the of the activities. So there'll be working sessions as part of the interviews, things that you mentioned in the mix there. Um, and often there's benchmarking, external community engagement, and then the internal aspect, and we scale those things to fit the, you know, the need of the engagement, right? So, so that's the idea on that level, okay? Um, so then we go down to define the future state. It's in the context of the broader organization, as just described here, and the community serve, defining what good looks like, what are the measures of success, right? So putting a little bit of framework about that. So I'm just kind of walking through what's in the material here at a, at a high level. And then we create what's called a blueprint, which is kind of this enduring view of uh, how things are, are going to be and what the guiding principles and all, and all are. And in our case here, the charter might be the blueprint, right? And then that kind of sets the framework. And then we work on the roadmap uh, underneath that that says, what is the prioritized path to make the changes we want to make? So that we're sure that we have a method to get there and we know that maybe there's a, you know, there's cultural things that are prereqs to process things or vice versa. We have the ability that in the roadmap to say what is the prioritized path uh, to move forward, okay? And we build out that roadmap um, and then look at the scale, the scope of it, and what kind of effort and resource, whatever is required to get there and align on that to say, yep, here's the things we're going to do and we're uh, committing to get to done and the resources that we're gonna put to that uh, to make it happen because we may need project management resources to you know, help drive something or maybe we need organizational change management resources. Potentially some rapid process improvement things that your staff might say, hey, we could really improve the way things are done and we bring in some facilitated models, right? There's Lean, Sigma, you may hear these terms, Kaizen activities that are about making rapid um, change that, uh, you know, that the staff itself is a part of to make happen or yourselves are a part of, right? So there's a variety of tools uh, that, that are brought to bear to uh, help flesh things out and, and get to a very specific set of deliverables. And then you go into implementation mode um, and we're looking at a timeline of this without, you know, having, you know, gone very deep yet of something that would start here at the beginning of March and run uh, until the beginning of December. That general time frame with, uh, we're assuming some project management engagement through our uh, enterprise project management office to you know, help structure this and move forward. And then we may use, like I said, some you know, process improvement resources, other things along the way, but that's the, the overall flow. Um, and then the at the end of it, we really have to operationalize, right? A modernization program isn't about you know, the, the design of it, it's about all the way through to where it's institutionalized and the way we go, to, the way we do our work. You know, um, racial equity aspects are built in, embedded into the modern methods, and you know, it kind of comes alive. It's not just to get us there, to make it something that we can sustainably operate in the new model, okay? And of course, community participation along the way, and then how does community participation manifest uh, over time, all right? So that's that's the general framework. Um, so I just have a question on the building of roadmap, roadmap and assessing, um, you know, like when the charter really compared to where we're going. And so if it's identified that we need to make adjustments uh, or it's recommended that the charter changes, what's the process there? Because we obviously don't set the charter and that's another organization. So with the project manager go to the charter commission? Like, how does that work? Um, well, actually, the charter commission is, just so there's kind of a framework for yeah. that, the charter commission is appointed by the judiciary. Right. And they make recommendations on changes to the charter. If there isn't agreement with the county, the county board, okay. then it, it goes on the ballot. If they make a recommendation that that we say, hey, that's a really good idea, yeah. then um, it can just be complete so through the charter commission. Okay. So, in this case, we would be going to the charter commission uh, and presenting. Uh, that would be my assumption that we would go to the charter commission and say, you know, we've gone through this process. We would give them the reasons and to ask them um, if that is acceptable to them. I believe it would work the opposite. 
in that way as well. So that uh, the only time it has to go to the voters is if there is disagreement or not mm -hmm. acceptance. Mm -hmm. It's not necessarily disagreement, yeah. but wanting it to go yeah. to the voters. And on that point, Madam Chair, mm -hmm. um, when you say we go to them, um, we as a board Count. actually don't don't really connect with the Charter Commission. We don't really have meetings. I mean, are you saying our staff no. goes to the board or we? I'm, I'm just curious what that looks like because we don't really have a connection with the Charter Commission. Well, right? I mean, we, we don't. Do. We do, yeah. yeah. I mean, in, we. And how? There are, I mean, yeah. there have been times that um, county commissioners have gone, the county manager has gone to their meetings um, if requested. Um, the chief clerk to the county board was always at the meetings and part of that process. We can get more information about the yeah, actual structure curious. of it. I, I but just curious when we do go there because I, you know, I, I've always been under the assumption that we're two separate entities. Oh, we are, and so, but we don't. So we don't. Well, we interact with other entities just as well. Yeah. And I'm just curious what that looks like. And with sometimes the, with the charter commission. I do remember that the charter commission asked for a county board member to come for when we were they were going through some amendments that they were considering. I was just curious so, what that looks for. I'm clearer on other yeah. boards that were on how yeah. we connect, but I'm just not clear on that one. Um, yeah. yeah, but it's so actually through the county manager's office is how those meetings are actually held and, and put together, the, but the appointment process is through the judiciary. <coughs> so, so, I that but there is a way for us to get on their agenda without so any Maybe we, I don't know, if, Madam Chair, so is, is there a time when we maybe get some more information yes. on that or do a little workshop on mm -hmm. the Charter Commission, oh, that's what our roles are, what their role is, what our role is? I feel like that would be helpful. Yeah. Madam Chair. In the meantime, oh. though, I think we should yeah, get yeah, more honestly, yeah. information on it. Just uh, the practice is that the chief judge usually consults with the board regarding the, mm -hmm. the appointments of that board. Okay, just as a consultation. And <coughs> the other is that it should reflect all our districts. Yes. So there is, well, it's separate, mm -hmm. there is interaction between the two. Yeah. I'm just curious okay. what they do at their meetings and mm -hmm. what they talk about. <laughs> it is interesting. I mean, I've been to yeah. it. Yeah. So um, we'll get more get information, information kind of about the about general. That part of yeah. what is the Charter Commission, how do things flow between the two, yeah. and we'll get, we'll, from as a result of this uh, meeting, we'll get that mm -hmm. information out so that you've at least got the basics, and then we can come back and determine whether or not we want to have a workshop on it. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. I just thought, um, I, I love how you've laid this out, mm -hmm. that's really helpful, and um, you know, I, we have the project manager, you know, interviewing commissioners. I would just add that our staff, because we address our changing staff, but our aides also uh, have some input, um, you know, for that interview process. Yeah, yeah. that's yeah. part of this. Okay. Well. Okay. 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 Um, one thing that, um, and I know that it, it is, it basically it goes both ways, um, but I do think that. Um, I forgot what the words were, and maybe if it's in here or not. But again, um, the direction of this county and the organizational change that all started with the board and working with the county manager and making sure that we move things forward. And I, I want to make sure that it's understood that this isn't about making the board fit with the organization. Mm -hmm. It's about the organization fitting with the board in a modern way. And to have something that is memorialized so that it's very clear what those roles are. Um, and sometimes when you're reading through things, it's it would appear that it would be the opposite way, but it really isn't. So board modernization means how does, how does the, the lead of the county board um, fit or what do we need to change, really, to make sure that there is that total connection? And that's what modernization means to me, is that total connection. Mm -hmm. Commissioner Carter. I really appreciate that. As I read through it and you know, coming into the discussion here, I just want to make sure that as we look at the questions that we're asking, it is about the, the fit and the alignment. Mm -hmm. You know, as Commissioner Reinhardt just said, 
that all things are aligned. The board sets the direction, and accordingly, we have made many changes in the organization over the past few years. So our our effort is to ensure that our work, you know, and the work of the county are connected and aligned as best possible. I understand that. <coughs> I also want to make sure that as we look at improvements um, or to eliminate inconsistency in the questions that we're answering inside this document, that we're also talking about efficiencies and you know effectiveness of the right. work that we're doing. So alignment, yes, you know, as we think about our operation, how can the operation be smoother? As we think about the responsibilities and the communication of work, how can that flow be better? Um, you know, this is multifaceted. You know, it's not just about systems, or I should say, information systems. It's about systems, you know, all of the work that we do together. So I think it's a substantial amount of work, and I really appreciate the opportunity to use the kind of processes here that we've used as we've made changes uh, to all of the work. The time frame from March 2nd to December 1st, I know involves the steps that you've talked about, including the interviews and evaluation. Will that, will we engage with this work not only as individuals, but also in a series of workshops like discussion opportunities here? And does this time frame take into account that individual work and the joint work that we need to do? So my comment as uh, Madam Chair Commissioners is that uh, there would definitely be interactive sessions along the way, working sessions, individual, um, you know, on a regular basis throughout this. So it would, there would be time commitment um, at a group level, in, in individual level, at the commissioner level, at the aid level, um, others, you know, throughout the county as well. So, so yes, there, there would definitely be those activities that would, you know, within this time frame we'd have to account for. So we would have additional uh, commissioner-led discussions. I think we would need to have that mm -hmm. um, as at least a check-in. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So, so that's that's one of the process. Yeah. Yes. And the launch then, if I might, Go ahead. the launch of whatever changes come out of this process would foreseeably be the first of January 2021. Yes. There could be processes that build out the changes that are needed. Well, Madam Chair, Commissioners, I, I actually don't, how, how you end up wanting to, you know, mm -hmm. part of it's the process you go through along the way as, as an ongoing discussion together. How and what those changes might look like beyond yeah, is a little less clear for this project than some of the others, but it'll, it's a tool. It's a tool you'll have available. It's a tool going forward. And so um, that would be when you would have it available to think about that. But. Yeah, thank you. That makes sense. Well, and I do think um, I mean, one of the things that we have embarked upon is the transforming systems together and I view this as a major part of that mm -hmm. because we need to know I mean we have this vision well we've got our mission vision and goals and how that actually gets implemented and how um, the leadership uh, of the board really defines how that's going to be rolled out because we know that that uh, that work of transforming systems together is one that's going to take a while, <laughs> and uh, but we need to be. I view this. I view this as us being really intimately involved with that process that the rest of our county is going through as well. But we, as leaders, need to understand how that is, um, how it is transforming, how we do our work, because that's the the role that we have that is ours as the electric board. Um, did you, um, was there any part of this, I mean, you're gonna roll this out on March 2nd. Um, so we had our, we're having our update today. Um, is there, 
What do you need from us today to make sure that March 2nd you're ready to roll? Because that's, you know, we're going to roll two weeks from now. So. Uh, Madam Chair, Commissioners, um, I think uh, what we are going to ask of you today is that um, those folks who are responsible for scheduling for you are aware that we will be in touch with them um, and that um, if you would please make this a priority so w within you know the uh, within your ability to um, so that we can get these uh, individual interviews scheduled so that we can get any um, type of focus groups that might be needed scheduled uh, we'd like to get them all scheduled as quickly as possible because that's really going to drive how we get to December 1st. So that's what I would ask of you okay. um, today. Uh, our next step, of course, is to engage a project manager, which we've already started looking um, at that. Uh, we have some um, ideas about that right now. So, yeah. I think just having your schedulers available and you know making this a priority. I have a question. Go ahead. Just because I don't know when else to bring this up, but just um, and I don't know if it's part of this modernization process, but I just want to get it on the table since we're all together and it's not anything that I think a number of us are hearing about. But it is our selection process of our boards and commissions, and I know that there's two different things. There's our citizen advisory council, but then there's our boards and commissions and. Just like in the last two weeks, um, our watershed, um, not, you know, appointees has come to me in several ways in several different watersheds, and you know we really don't interview them. They really have they have levy authority. You know we say okay, here's the only ones we get, and then we appoint them, and we don't always get the balance that we may need in geography, in diversity of our community, and so I'm really wanting us to do something about this, and I don't know which where that fits, but I hope it's part of our modernization work because these are really important deals. And, um, and so it's just, it's how, we, it's how we appoint these really important members of our board, but also, how do we recruit them? How do we let those communities know? You know now, I've had people say to me, it was really hard to find how I, how I even apply for that. Mm -hmm. And so um, I just heard from members of our community in the past few weeks about this. So I know that I've talked to the county manager about this, and. And I, 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 I know that there's like two different discussions. It's, you know, citizen advisory councils, which are wanting to continue their work the way they are, and that's all great, and they're all good. But then it's these other boards and commissions that we appoint to. So, well, I just want to get that, that out there. We did get uh, an email from Janet Guthrie a week ago. Um, about because that that is a major project that they have been working on, and that kind of gave us an overview of what was happening with it. I don't there weren't recommendations in that that I remember. Uh, Madam Chair, the top line would be we moved away from the idea of trying to consolidate yeah. or streamline right. groups because of pushback from individual groups and just feeling like that was a tough spot to start. We're moving forward on the idea of a of a one-stop source of recruitment and a website where all that information is available so much and what Commissioner McGuire just mentioned is already a part of the next step of that process. Um, and so we're trying to make it easier for commissioners to be able to, ha you know, have that information out there, but there's a part, so that's kind of where it's at. Okay, so we, yeah, get more coming on that. I should also point out though that um, we can, uh, I have interviewed people for mm -hmm. uh, watershed districts. We do it with the library because we've just always done it and we re recognize right. how important that board is. But it's just as important on these other boards. That's what I'm thinking. And especially when we're looking at diversity and community engagement. Um, there is no reason that we can't interview. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Especially, in uh, fact, that's one of the questions on the, on the uh, application. Are you willing to be interviewed? Mm -hmm. So that mm -hmm. may be something that we want to consider. And then I have other, and Raphael, you can go around, I, and I have. Yeah, No, I'm just reacting to Mary Jo. She just made me think of something. <coughs> you know, we all try hard to fill these appointed positions, mm -hmm. not just just in general, yeah, big picture. Exactly. Right. And sometimes it's hard to recruit, recruit in certain communities, and we tried, and we have this goal here of, mm -hmm. of uh, you know, equity and diversity, et cetera. And we're doing this, and but it's the programming that makes the difference. 
you're not going to get a Latino to come and sit on a parks and rec if all the activities are about hot ice skating. Yes. Uh, yeah, that's not going to work. So I'm just trying, because you, yeah. you just made me think of that. Totally. I mean, we could, could, could we interview you folks? Yes. Yeah. So I go and I, yeah. you know, beat the drums and I get one or two mm -hmm. people to apply. And then by the, by the two years later, the term is up and they say, adios, yeah. uh, we're I, done. I agree. Um, well, I know. Okay, yeah. and then Nicole, uh, just to, yes. <laughs> I mean, I, I agree that that's an that's an issue is how are these boards boards operating? And I appreciate county manager saying we're going to have a one stop where people can go. People still have to go there; they have to know about it. I, I feel like there needs to be a broader outreach to communities to say, here's how you can change the parks and here's how you can be there and be a voice there. And and it's great to interview people. We're going to be interviewing people from our own areas. And of course, we're going to want to support them. But then we, who's looking at the geographic balance? Like on our watershed district, we have two people, neighbors on the same lake in a watershed area. And they are good, but there are two people on the same lake. And, and so where is our geographic balance? So um, I mean, I think they're going to be appointed because nobody else knows about coming up for that. And so. Um, yeah, and and uh, I don't know which one. Which one are you talking yeah, about? Yeah, it's the next watershed appointments we have. Ramsey, Ramsey, Washington. So those two are going to be reappointed because nobody else, you know, is going for it. And our cities. There's one. The other thing, our cities are allowed to recommend people, and they're absolutely going to recommend people in their cities. So it's a it's another parochial kind of thing. And I don't dis I don't say we shouldn't ask for our cities' okay. recommendations, but we have to recognize that that is what cities are going to do. And we, we should make these m more regional decisions, which is why we are the ones making them. So, well, just want to make okay. that. And you know what? I do right. think that's outside of yeah. this, but um, good to bring it up. Right. And we will make sure that right. uh, because Janet is working on this and how we can do a better job. But I do think that you know, I mean, they they send us things. We try to reach out. We do different things. Um, right. And I don't know how we. I, I guess I'd like to know how we. Answer. I'll have Janet follow up with yeah. some specifics. Okay. Well, I know I do. So, mm -hmm. <laughs> Commissioner Brown, yeah. and then Commissioner Carr. I, I think to to yeah. some extent addressing Mary Jo's concerns and just yeah. in general, the idea of documentation mm -hmm. of what we're doing is really important. And I think not just from right. a practical matter that oh, it would have been nice to have something to reference. Um, it would still be nice to have something to reference. Yes, but yes absolutely <laughs> true. Uh, but also in, in the act of documentation, it helps us identify like oh, we don't really have a process for this. How do we do this? Right. And it also helps us examine things that have yeah. become ingrained as ways we do things that are are. are choices we've made and maybe we haven't consciously made those choices to help us re-examine those. Um, so I, I'm really looking forward to that piece because I think that can be very transformational in, in the work that we do. And you know, not to elongate this, but I just have to give credit to some very conscientious efforts that have been happening around helping. As you have said, Commissioner Reinhardt, all of this, our board modernization is in context of the entire county modernization work that has been happening. And as we think about transforming systems together, in particular, that's a part of the process, reaching out to discover where those uh, input, or I should say pipeline, opportunities are for us, such as those organizations who are now doing community engagement work with us and helping us to attract the attention of those that we want to better be able to serve finding areas where there are boards and commissions training and being able to engage with those kinds of things. So I think we look forward to this not being such a uh, lonely responsibility that we may have, you know, to recruit and find people who are willing to come to the table and stay, although the conversation doesn't necessarily change. And the, the uh, conversation that we're having with Burns Institute this afternoon in fact, is a part of that. How do we change systems which tend to perpetuate themselves and produce the kinds of results that um, you know we've seen historically? So this is an opportunity, every one of these discussions for us to dive deeper and deeper. And they're not disconnected from each other at all. So well, the and boards, I, the and boards I do think the that point uh, Raphael's comment also, um, you can get people on the yeah. boards and commissions mm -hmm. um, but if you don't have something that is tangible for them to do, then it's a meeting. Yeah, exactly. And, and that's we have sites for meetings that they don't really have yeah. 
uh, input and, or substantial so things to do. It becomes a chicken and egg Just questions. Yes. <laughs> while we're talking about this, I, I don't want to prolong this if we're going to have a workshop on it or something, but I just heard from someone from Ramsey from the Capital Region Watershed at yeah. Allison, Allison John's uh, town hall meeting on Saturday. She came up to me and she goes, you know, I was on the watershed board and I didn't even know it, but I got put, I guess someone else replaced me. I didn't even know it was happening. That's not oh, true. Wow. Okay, so it's not true. not true. Okay. Let that go yeah, okay. Well, she came up to me. <laughs> yeah. And she was like, I didn't know. And we don't look like people physically assaulted or elected. Oh, okay. Well, that is. So, yeah. Anyway, I just I just think if there's a okay. process that we know of where we let people know, and maybe you already did let her and, know. And I know what yeah. we do. And you did a and great I job do. of letting your people know that they weren't going to be appointed on, yes. on camera. But we can't do it. We can't. So there's a process in that. And I was like, check with Janet. We can't do it until the vote comes. And then we can contact them. And then them. we can contact them. We can't right. contact them ahead of time. Uh -huh. you, like we can't like say that someone else is being vote, appointed. Because we all vote on it. Yeah. Yeah, right. So... Oh, we can't. Okay. Because We're not the vote doesn't happen until the yeah. vote happens, and then we right. can contact. Physically. Yes. Mm -hmm. Very true. Okay. We're going well, to have, have that's uh, yeah. uh, obviously a discussion yeah. that we need to have. Yeah. Um, okay. So this is what I've gotten, and I I keep looking at that clock, and I yeah, no, don't want to Either way, we got to wrap up. Yes, we do. <laughs> but um, the things that we need to come back um, are. Uh, we want to have uh, some sort of a memo or just, you know, what are the basic things with the Charter Commission and how do we interact with them? So if we have something that comes out of this, I, I don't know if you were in the room when you were talking about Okay. Um, but that we need to know, okay, how do we take something to the Charter Commission? We know how they get something to us, but we would like to know if there is something there, how would we do that? Um, and we may, after getting that information, we may want to have uh, more discussion about that, but uh, to begin with, we at least need that basic information. We're going to have um, at least one, if not more, uh, check-in um, commissioner-led uh, discussions about this as we're moving forward. Um, and also just looking at this as, oh, and we'll also have, and I think it is a separate uh, workshop, and I know that Jan, and there's a lot of work that's been going on about it, around it, but it ties into what we're doing for modernization. So I'm not sure how to do that, but clearly it's it's a bigger discussion. And we need to have something that is um, in writing that shows us how this is what happens. But I think probably the most important thing we can do is when we're looking at these different committees and boards, commissions, is to have a very clear understanding of what is expected of people that are on it. It's hard to recruit because ultimately we recruit through uh, social media and different things. Um, but a lot of this comes down to the commissioners recruiting. Mm -hmm. um, and we need to have something that really tells them what is it that you're going to do, why is this important, and that you're going to be valued when you are there. And if we can't say that, there's nothing we're going to be able to do to improve <laughs> uh, recruitment. So I do think that that's a part of that discussion, but I think we have to have a, a separate one. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm seeing nods from the chair and from the county manager. Mm -hmm. um, and then finally, um, I really want to make sure uh, that uh, the commissioner's assistants okay. are included, as you pointed out, mm -hmm. but I want to reinforce that. And I do have to tell you, I mean, we all have different ways that we mm -hmm. use our assistants, mm -hmm. and that is their title. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not even sure. I think it may be principal, assistant, yeah, aide, whatever. Principal. I have to tell you, I call Darren what he really does for me, and that's, he's my policy director. Um, because assistant sounds like they're helping you, you know, put your files in order or something. And, <laughs> I mean, it's, it's not a real description of what we expect from the people in those positions. So, you know, it, it doesn't have to, I mean, what I use my, and, and that's how I use Darren, he's my policy director. Mine is my chief of staff. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> mine's, well, my, mine's my pet millennial. Oh, my Okay, oh, but well, that, yeah, but I, I mean, I think it's no. I, I think, think it's right. part of this. Yeah, yeah. They all pick up their phones. Yeah, and they're all like, <laughs> 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 case in point. And the modernization <laughs> is uh, within this board office. <laughs> right. Um, we kind of have this culture, and it's been here 
since I was here in the 80s, as far as how we um, interact and, and the, the, the title of aid is, yeah. is used within the office. And I think we need to um, really, yeah, I agree. We, we need to look at all of it. And that's why I think it's so important that you brought that up, yeah. that they be part of this discussion because, boy, I mean, no. talked about uh, forward facing or public facing and all of the things that come to that to the office, um, yeah, if they're in the, if we may even know it, if we're in the blend, then yeah. we're really in trouble, but yeah. um, they need to be in that loop, and I think that's part of what will come out of this. Yeah. <laughs> so, transforming systems together, um, that's what this is about, how we do it within the county board office, and how we lead this organization <coughs> so that they are um, following what, what our vision, mission, and goals are in this organizational structure, which is something that we have uh, put into place. Yeah. I thank you for bringing that up. It occurs to me that, as you said, the description of the job and the work of our principal assistants is so different today yes. than it would have been when that, that work happened to describe it. And information is a very big part of um, you know what we have so much more access today than ever before and I find that I know in my office Matt and I find that he processes information mm -hmm. and is able then to construct from that gathering of information and knowledge real work that helps to advance my office's work and as even though we know we may use a principal assistance very, very differently, there's a connection that we have to describe office to office and our office to the administration mm -hmm. that we have not been attentive to. So as we get into the processing of this work, interviewing uh, those aides and understanding the work that they do and can do on our behalf <laughs> is to see the opportunities is going to be very well, and I can give you a case in point, and that is with the gun range. It was Darren that did all of the research on the noise suppression, mm -hmm. noise suppressors, mm -hmm. and took it to the city of St. Paul. Um, and they were, I mean, to say they were resistant to begin with is putting it mildly. Um, and the St. Paul, I shouldn't say that, the city of St. Paul versus the St. Paul Police Department. Mm -hmm. But it was that research that we were able to provide them. Yeah. Oh, we should mm -hmm. look into this mm -hmm. because of the bigger issues. So, anyway, um, so thank you for bringing that up and didn't mean to dominate this conversation with that, but at the same time, um, it's really critical when you talk about modernization of this office. Absolutely. They are a huge part. That's right. Okay, is there anything else that you need from us? We're good. Okay, okay. looking forward to kicking this off. All right. Thank you. So, I'm going to go to the next one.